Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today uh, we're going to be going over some simple maintenance tips that you can do on your condensing unit on the outside unit. Uh, now who am I? I'm just an AC guy that has uh, been doing it for a long time and I'm trying to teach you a little bit of tips and uh, a little bit, of, little bit of trade secrets and tips to uh, be able to help you with your cost on your air conditioner maintenance and uh, service and maintenance stuff. and. Uh, Anyway, today we're going to be talking about the condenser. Now, here's what I use for uh, cleaning the condenser. First of all, I use a coil gun. Uh, this coil gun is 50, 60 bucks. Uh, then I use this uh, this New Bright, New Bright coil cleaner. And uh, this stuff is uh, the absolute best coil cleaner that you can buy. I am not in any way a sponsored, affiliated, or anything with these people. Uh, but they, their product is amazing. Um, I've seen AC guys leave the supply house and go to the next one just to get this because it is the best cool cleaner on the market. Now, where can you get this? As you know, you can get all this bought off Amazon for cheaper than what I can buy at the supply house. Now, let me tell you what's going to happen. You call me out, an AC guy, out to, uh, to do the condensing cool cleaning for you. Uh, he's going to buy this stuff at $50 a pop, $60 a pop, whatever it is. And uh, then he's going to come out and do what I'm fixing to show you. It's going to take him about an hour or so to do it. And he's going to charge you a couple of $300 for it. When you could have bought this right here, this is a coil gun, New Calgon coil gun. Now they have an Amazon store, New Calgon Amazon store. You can buy this for 60 bucks and buy this for 40 bucks. And you can do your own, quite simply. And I'm fixing to show you how to do that. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that power is not coming out here to this thing. And uh, there's two different ways to do that. One is the preferred method, and that's with the meter. But this one just so happens to be running. So I'm just going to pull the disconnect. When this thing dies, then uh, when it stops, uh, stops running, when it goes off, then I know power's been disconnected from it. So let's pull the disconnect and turn this thing off. The reason we want to make sure there's no power coming to it, these things are made and engineered to handle some water. Uh, but uh, but just rainwater. But when you're cleaning the condensing coil, you are fixing to put some serious amounts of water through it. So you want to be able to uh, know that it doesn't have any power, so you don't create any shorts, uh, short the ground, wind up getting electrocuted out here when you're out here working on it. So uh, let's uh, let's turn to pull this disconnect and uh, make this thing turn off. Now most disconnects are uh, just like this one here. Uh, they're just a gray box on the wall. Uh, you can know it's a disconnect for the air conditioning unit by following this conduit right here. It goes around and goes into the bottom of the air conditioning, the, the condensing unit. Uh, and this is the one that pulls it. It does it. Now on the inside here, some of them have a pull, just a straight out pull tab. This happens to be a breaker. Uh, really, I don't see this very often, actually. Uh, here we go. All right, now that did kill the unit. So, uh... Let's get into this unit. Now, while we move along here, I'm going to give y'all a little, uh, little tell y'all what some of the components are and uh, so y'all know what we're looking at on the inside there. Now, most of your air conditioning units, uh, residential anyway, uh, you're going to have two screw sizes. You're going to have a 5 sixteenths, which that's what this one happens to have is 5 sixteenths, and quarter inch. Uh, very seldom do you see any other screw size on a unit anywhere. Uh, so we've got five sixteenths. Uh, I do not, some people like to, most people like to use a drill, impact or something like that. I do not because I have in the past stripped a whole bunch of screws and I don't want to strip the screws out. So I use a nut driver. Uh, so you can go pick you up one of these pretty cheaply at uh, any home improvement store. Uh, also the uh, condensing cleaner and they also sell coil guns. Not those, not that brand coil guns. I've never seen that at a home improvement store, but they do have coil guns at your home improvement store. So uh, let's open this thing up and see what's in here. All right, so here's what we got in the condensing unit. Uh, you have your low voltage coming in from the inside, uh, which is what pulls this contactor in right here. Uh, this is a contactor, and uh, this right here is a capacitor. Now, you need to be careful with a capacitor because it holds holds energy. It holds uh, power, so you can still get hit pretty good with that. Um, it'll, it'll hit you really quick, 
and then it'll be over but it still hurts it really it'll just really piss you off when it happens but this is what the average air conditioning condensing unit has on the inside contactor and a capacitor that's about it now, some of the more complicated ones do have some computer boards and stuff like that and when you get into your heat pumps they're a little bit different uh, so but this is um, this is what's in most condensing units looks just like this so this uh, contactor pulls in right here and uh, with 24 volts pulls the coil in and it pulls the contactor in and makes continuity between your high voltage coming in and your high voltage leaving right here to uh, to power your compressor and your outdoor fan um, other than that that's about it so, uh, why are we so uh, worried about having a clean condensing coil well uh, there's several reasons uh, it's just it's just a matter of airflow and heat transfer uh, the uh, in order for me to really explain to you why this is necessary I'm gonna have to get into the refrigeration cycle a little bit and get a little boring it's only about 60 seconds worth of stuff so let me talk about that if you don't want to hear that just kind of fast forward a little bit and uh, but some people might be interested in it but this explains why it's so important to have this thing so clean well here's what you got hang on let me get situated here get where I can do this uh, this right here this big line right here Look all this crap here get all that out of the way this right here is your suction line and uh, now what that means is it pulls refrigerant from inside the house back out here to the compressor now uh, that's where all your heat is from the house now this pipe is cold so I know that doesn't make much sense to some people but it is hotter then it is it is warmer than it is when it enters the coil so this is actually picking up heat and bringing it outside now here's where the tricky part is is where do you how do you get rid of heat when it's 100 degrees outside on a 60 degree pipe well that's where the compressor comes in now I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it or not but there's a compressor down in there that compresses the refrigerant so when you compress refrigerant and bring the pressure up on it, it raises the pressure up to about 300 PSI. But when you do that, uh, it makes the refrigerant hot. Now all of a sudden you have hot gas. So then you send it through the condensing coil here, and that's where this fan is spinning and pulling air, even though it's 100 degree air, it's still pulling air across, or 90 to 100 degrees. I'm in the south, so it does, it's not unusual for it to be 100 degrees here. But, uh, but it pulls air across the coil, pulls it up through here, and what in turn what it does is it cools down the refrigerant and condenses it to a liquid. And then it sends it back out through here at about 80 degrees and sends it back into the, uh, into the, uh, the evaporator coil on the indoor unit. So this is your liquid line, this is your suction line. Now, while we're down here looking at this, this right here, this Rubitex uh, keeps this line from uh, warming up too much, keeps it from condensating. Uh, so uh, while you're doing the maintenance on your condenser, just kind of look at this, this, uh, this line set here, and see if this stuff's in good shape. It does weather. It does um, start deteriorating over years and years and years. So it's just something that you can, uh, can check while you're out here. These pipe sizes come in uh, four different sizes. Uh, you have... Uh, uh, five eighths, uh, three three quarter, uh, seven eighths, an inch and an eighth. As far as residential goes, that's about the only three, only four pipe sizes you're going to have. Uh, you could have half inch, but that's going to be a really small unit. All right. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to be pulling this top off here, so we can access the inside of the inside of the condenser. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. If you come out here once a month or so and uh, spray this thing off just just like this you know just take some water and spray it down just always spray down at a at an angle uh, so you're washing the dirt and stuff down the coil and not through the coil that is very important but if you start washing it through the coil you're just going to pack it in there real good and tight and cause airflow issues you want this thing to be clean so you can pull air through this coil um, here in a minute i'll show you what the coil is made of it's tube and fin this is called tube and fin uh, because you got a tube 
that runs through all these fins that you're going to see. And the fins is what actually takes the heat and spreads it out so it can be dispersed and pushed out the top and be uh, and pulled out of the refrigerant. Um, so uh, my next step is going to be to pull this top off. Uh, you could spray it down with the coil cleaner if you wanted to uh, with this on here. You're just not going to get as good of enough clean. You want to be able to get to where you can clean it from the inside and push the dirt out uh, because the airflow is in through the coil this way so you want to push the dirt back through so you don't just kind of push it up in there like i said a while ago and just cram it in there and just have it take packed in there because when you do that you're going to create mud that's going to dry and you're going to have packed coils over a period of time so let's get this top off As you can tell, the top is just held on with a whole bunch of screws. All of them are the same size. All of them are exactly the same kind of screw in most cases, unless somebody's come along and lost one and put something different in there. Most cases they are either quarter inch or five sixteenths, like I said before. Uh, now this is a uh, Goodman unit, as you can see. And uh, so it, it is, uh, Goodman actually has some pretty good hail guards on here. This, this uh, cover on here is considered a hail guard, keep the coil from getting damaged by hail. Um, so I like to take that off too, completely up to you. But, uh, in most cases, when you start trying to wash out from the inside, uh, it just kind of, uh, doesn't quite get, it washes all this dirt down in here. Everything runs right down in here. It just, to me, it's better to have the coil guards off, but I'll have all the screws out of this. So now I'm not going to take this completely off. What I do is I just raise it up and kind of prop it up. And you want to be careful doing this because the fan is hanging off the top of here the fan motor and it's going to have a blade you don't have to be really really careful you just don't want to get hung up on something and go to jerking around and wind up bending the fan blades hey, look at this found me a free tool somebody lost a tool in this it might have been me <laughs> Um, so that gets the top off, uh, and I'm going to take this, uh, hell guard off here. And, uh, it's, it, this is the most, the worst part. You pull all the wasp nest out while you're in here too. Uh, if you're doing this, you know, in a nice hot summer's day, you might want to have a can of wasp spray with you while you're doing it. Cause you never know where them, where them bad boys going to build their nest. Anyway, um, so I'm going to pull this hell guard off next, and then I'll show you what's on the inside here. Uh, some of y'all probably have never seen the inside of a, uh, inside of a condensing unit it's very simple let me get this hail guard off and we'll talk about that all right so i got the hail guard off and uh this thing's actually a little bit dirtier than i thought it was uh so uh we've got a good one to show y'all here uh let's go ahead and pick all the old vegetation off anything you can see that you can get off by hand uh you start letting the vines and stuff grow in there and uh, you wind up with a mess all right so you can see down here exactly how filthy this thing is it's got a bunch of stuff all over this is actually a pretty dirty coil so yeah all right well let's look at what's down inside this condensing unit so here's the condense here's what's inside the condensing unit i don't know what y'all were expecting but there's just really not much in there this is your compressor uh this is what uh takes the uh the refrigerant when it comes in this is your this is your hot gas line right here. This is where, oh no, yeah, this is your suction line back here. The bigger one is the suction line. This is where the refrigerant comes in. Then the compressor compresses it, takes the pressure up on it, which in, in turn makes the, um, the temperature of the refrigerant go really high. And it could come out of here at 180 degrees, actually. Come in at, at uh, 60 and leave at 180 degrees. It comes in over here, goes through this coil, which this is your condensing coil. All the way through all, there's just, see this header right here? All these little coils and stuff run through all this. And these fins is what um, what removes the heat. So, um, yeah. All right. But that's it. That's all there is to a condensing unit. So, condenser motor right here with your fan on the end of it. Now, I got it propped up on there so I can't spin it. But, anyway. Uh, all right. Well, let's get to cleaning this thing. Now, when I'm on one that's this dirty... Uh, what I generally do now, you don't want any kind of angled spraying 
uh, this way or that way you want to make sure you're spraying straight on because you can bend these fins uh, these fins are very very easily to bend they put too high pressure of water on there uh, they will bend so the first thing I like to do is I just like to spray down and try to knock all the dust off the outside of the unit just in a motion just kind of like this just kind of knocking the big stuff off Let me get the rest of this done and then uh, we'll get into the real cleaning with the chemicals and stuff. Another thing I like to do while I'm doing the condenser uh, maintenance is um, get this over here. There's a little trough that runs around here on the bottom if you can see that. Uh, I like to spray that out get all that trash out of there like that. Just to kind of keep it keep the bottom of the unit clean. I uh, just kind of feel like that keeps the bottom from rusting, uh, forming holes, uh, structural integrity, that sort of stuff. But it builds up a lot of trash in there. And that's another reason I like to pull the hell guard off while I'm doing this. To keep, get that kind of washed out of there. Uh, I like to do that before I actually put chemical on there and start all this cleaning because it gets all that trash out of the way. All right, so now that we have that done, um, now we can put some chemical on there. Uh, now, uh, this chemical, uh, coil cleaner, is a very uh, high pH level cleaner. And I, I highly, highly recommend using uh, chemical gloves and some uh, protective eyewear uh, while you're doing this. Because uh, this stuff is uh, very potent and um, it can cause some skin irritation and possibly even like second degree burns uh, is pretty potent. Uh, so I recommend that, but of course I get over here to do this and I don't have any with me, so I'm gonna go without it. But I recommend it highly that uh, you just wear some gloves and, and splash on your skin or whatever. And you'll know it's there because it'll automatically, it'll start have a little sting, a little irritation. Uh, won't be anything horrible if you go inside when you start feeling it. If you go inside, wash it off real quick, it'd be all right. Uh, so it's nothing to be scared of uh, but I would definitely wear eye protection I don't wear eye protection because I can't see without my glasses uh, so I just and I, I just can't stand it anyway so um, all right so here's how you do this this right here the lid pops off just that easy now I'm gonna use this entire gallon I always use a whole gallon on the condenser no matter what uh, you just fill this bottle up and uh, I just fill it all the way up. It's usually two fills like that. Put the lid back on it. Now, there's a little dial on here that has A through E, I believe. Uh, I put it on C because that's middle ways. And it, so all that does is indicate how much... Uh, how concentrated your uh, water mixture with your uh, chemical mixture is going to be. I leave it on C because most of the time that's about it and I can spray as much on there as I want. Uh, so I don't generally worry about the concentrated concentration level. And your hose is quick connect. Well, quick connect. Just like that, just pops right on and off. Just pull this little ring back, slide it on there. Uh, it has a foaming tip on it. You can use a foaming tip or you can't. Sometimes I don't use the foaming tip depending on how far away I need to stand away from my equipment that I'm doing. Sometimes I just don't want to be right on top of it while I'm cleaning it. And what I do is I just start spraying. I start on this side over here and I just start spraying just like so. This thing's leaking. There we go. Uh, if it's working really hard, if the coil cleaner is working really hard, it's going to have a good smell to it. Nothing to worry about. It might actually start steaming. And I spray chemical on there until I come up with a nice, pretty, white foam covering the entire thing. That way I know that the pH level is still high on the coil cleaner and uh, that. Um, that it's working. I can smell it now. It's starting to work really hard. 
Oh yeah, there's that smell. And you want it to push through the coil like this while you're doing it. That way you know you're making full penetration through the coil. You're getting that coil cleaner all through there. And just work your way around the entire coil doing that. Hang on. I want y'all to see this. I don't know if you can see it real well over there. Um, Alright, check it out from this angle over here. Uh, watch the coil. You can see the dirt pushing through. See how muddy that is? I mean, just pushing that dirt through there. Oh, yeah. Yep. Just keep spraying until you have a nice, white, pretty white foam all over the whole coil. Ooh, that smell, something else. Man. You're gonna have a whole bunch of nasty foam coming out of it like so. Uh, while you're doing it, you can see how brown it is. That's just it pushing the dirt out. Uh, but yeah, I just load this thing up with, with cleaner while I'm doing it. Uh, that way I know I'm getting it in there good. You can see how, how white and white that is in there. So, yeah, see over here on this side over here, yeah, I can feel the heat coming off of it. This side over here um, is pretty much done doing what it's going to do. See how the foam is just sitting there. Uh, this side here, we'll probably spray it a little bit more. You can see this side here is pretty, uh, pretty nasty still. So I'll spray that some more. Yeah, we're doing some good here. Um, all right, I'm going to keep spraying keep cleaning wait I ran out of chemical I got a refill so uh, let me get that done and we'll get back at it. Yeah, in my opinion you cannot spray too much coil cleaner on these things when you're cleaning like this um, because um, you want to try to get it to where the pH level stays up on it once the pH level stays up on it then um, that's uh, when it's when it's done cleaning So once you get a nice pretty white foam on there like this, you're pretty much done with the chemical part of it. Then you got to spray it off. Now spraying it off, you want to take your time and uh, spend a lot of time putting some uh, putting water on it because uh, you're trying to get that pH level down so it'll stop eating because it will eat your condensing coil up. But You get the pH level down, neutralize it, and it won't do that. Uh, now the next step is just to start spraying and uh, knocking this coil cleaner out. You're going to see a lot of dirty water coming out. You just spray and spray and spray and spray until you don't see any more murky water, any more trash coming out. See how murky that water is coming out of there? I don't know if the camera's picking that up or not, but pretty murky. All right, and while you're spraying around on this thing, kind of keep an eye on your water um, coming through the coil uh, to kind of give you an indication of how dirty it is. If you're spraying along like this and you see some a little spot where dirt comes out while you're spraying on it, um, go back to it, hit it again. Hit that spot again because it probably means it's still dirty right there. And you just keep spraying like this until you don't see any more of that murky water. I right know this part looks pretty good. All right, well, I'm going to keep spraying this thing, um, and uh, when I'm done, I'll get back with y'all, show y'all the results, uh, give you a couple more tips that you can do while you're, while you got your condenser open, 
and uh, some things that you need to look for while you're in there, some things that you can take care of while you're in there that can help with the longevity of the unit. Uh, anyway, uh, let me get this done and I'll get right back with you. Don't go anywhere. Hey, while I'm doing this, why don't y'all go ahead and like, subscribe, and all that fun stuff at the bottom. Look, if y'all have any air conditioning questions or anything like that, uh, there's several different ways you can hit me up. You can just hit me up in the comments at the bottom of this, uh, below this video. Uh, or you can, uh, I've got an email address attached uh, to this uh, channel. Uh, or you can hit me up on my Instagram. I'll put an Instagram uh, link to my Instagram down in the description. Um, so, yeah, if y'all have any air conditioning questions, if you have an AC guy come out and you're like, ah, what? You hit me up with it. And uh, let me see if I can help you out. Maybe I can uh, tell you if you're ripping you off or what. So, anyway, but, uh, yeah, well, let me get this done. Be right back. All right, so I think we're done. I've been spraying on it for a while. Uh, like I said, at this point, all you're trying to do is get the pH level up on the, uh, on the, on the coil cleaner uh, so it doesn't keep eating the coils. Uh, so uh, just a couple of things you need to look at. When you're in here, you got the top propped up like this. This will help with just longevity of the unit. Uh, plus, it helps with efficiency to a certain degree. Uh, but inside the unit, inside here, uh, leaves and stuff get in the top. Uh, while you got this top pulled back, get in there with a shot back, a broom or whatever, and get as much of that stuff out of there as you can. Uh, I have been on a couple of calls where it had this much debris. I mean, you couldn't even see the compressor in there. It had this much pine straw in there, and it just wasn't moving air across the coil like it was supposed to. So if you get a, too much of that built up in there, it's going to cause airflow issues, and the bottom part of your coil is not going to uh, transfer heat like it's supposed to. Just something to look for. Uh, another thing is there's a uh, just make sure everything's nice and tidy. Uh, zip ties and electrical tape go a long ways in making these things look good. Because um, um, I mean, you got your uh, your yard guys come out. I tell you what, one of the easiest service calls I ever go on is you pull up in front of the house and you look at the yard. The yard has just been mowed. You go up and you knock on the front door. And any AC guy that's watching this right now is probably laughing to himself because he knows where I'm going with this. You go up and you knock on the front door and you say, hey, how's it going? And they're like, well, you know, it was cool and fine this morning, but then it got hot just, just that quick. And you ask them, well, was it, was it cooling before the yard guys got here or after the yard guys got here? And they're like, well, it kind of stopped cooling right when the yard guys left. I was like, okay, be right back. Go around to the back. There's that little brown wire show job. Uh, yeah, I uh, I look at that. It's been cut with the weed eater, so I wire nut it together, get everything run back to get, get everything back online, and go in and charge them 300 bucks. So yeah, that kind of stuff. That's kind of stuff you need to look for. Um, uh, but uh, but yeah, just a zip tie. If you have that zip tie taped down, whatever, uh, they they can't do that. Uh, if they do it, they really worked hard at it. Uh, but yeah, they're going to come out here weed eat around. Every time they weed eat around here, anytime somebody does any kind of yard work, whether you do your own yard work or somebody else does it for you, uh, just they're going to weed eat around here. Just come out and kind of hose it off every once in a while and uh, let them, um, and, and that way it keeps the dust down off of it, keeps the dirt off of it. But this thing's just pulling dirt, pulling air all the time. There's no kind of filtration on this except for right here. Um, so, all right, but uh, well, that's it. Uh, I hope y'all got something out of this video. I'm going to put this uh, put this back together uh, off camera off uh, after I'm done with the video. Uh, you just kind of go in reverse of what you just did. You just start and put your tail guard back on and then lay the top back down. And, uh, and that's it. So, uh, but yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I hope y'all got something out of it. Uh, my intention here is to help y'all cut down on the uh, cost of your maintenance. Uh, you don't have to have an AC guy come out and do this kind of stuff for you. This is stuff you can do on your own. Uh, we, but we spent, what, 100 bucks on supplies and that coil gun, you can use it again next year. You can use it on your, uh, on your uh, mom and dad's unit or your brother's unit or something like that. Pass it around. Uh, so, yeah, that's what my intention is here. All right. Uh, on the next video, we're going to look at the indoor unit. We're going to do a little maintenance tips on the indoor unit. Uh, that's it for out here. So, all right. Thanks. Appreciate y'all watching. Y'all like and subscribe. See y'all on the next one.